Good morning. Peace and blessings. Happy Monday. It is such a beautiful day here in Los Angeles. <laughs> the sun is so incredibly golden and bright and like amazing. Like I totally love it. So um, Monday is the day that the moon rules and the moon is the the moon is not a planet. The moon is, they call it a satellite, actually. Good morning, good morning. They call it a satellite and, you know, there's all sorts of like stories and folklore about the moon and it being placed there. Like it wasn't, like the moon only is, um, it only goes around the earth where all the rest of the planets go around the sun. <laughs> and so, um, so the moon is a specific kind of thing that is really particular to the earth. It pulls, it, it creates a gravitational pull, or it doesn't create it, it is a part of a gravitational pull um, that is created by the sun. And the moon regulates our reproductive systems. It regulates the water on the planet. Like if you live near the ocean and they say the tide is high or the tide is low, all of that is regulated through the moon. Um, you know, women who have, a, you know, really hard menstrual periods, that stuff is regulated through the moon. The moon is the negative charge and that's why it has all of this folklore that goes along with it, like turning people into werewolves and, um, you know, when we have a full moon, crime rates go up. Um, all of this sort of stuff is because it, it, it brings out what is within us already. So because it's pulling the negative energy and the negative is as significant as the positive. You will hear people talking about, you know, like as we're doing all this evolutionary thing right now, because we are, we're truly evolving as humans. People might talk about the moon like it's like it's negative, like stay away from negativity, but that's not what it is at all. It's the opportunity to master your own shadow is what it is. The moon gives you the energy to master your shadow. So whatever it brings up inside of you, like I know for me, I can have jealousy and possessiveness. I have Pluto conjunct my son. Pluto conjunct my son is just a motherfucker. Like it is like... <laughs> it is it is power hungry jealous competitive like i have all that stuff that goes on in me and what i do is i do my rituals and my prayer around it because it is in the negativity that we actually source our power so you have to be able to master your negativity you have to be able to master your inner reality. That is the moon and the, and the moon is in the darkness. So the darkness brings up the shadow, which is the negativity. I mean, this stuff is really simple when you, it's simple when you see it, right? Because the universe is doing the same thing over and over and over. It's doing it at the level of the planets, the same thing that's happening in the planets then creates energetic fields that's happening in everything, everywhere. So this is why I read the astrology so that I can understand what's going on in the cosmos. And then how am I relating to that? How am I relating to that experience? So the moon, like I said, is the negativity. Pluto also is negativity. <laughs> and negativity and positivity go hand in hand. You cannot have one without the other. It is how it works. And so the sun is the light and the sun is the positive, the positive charge. You guys will hear me say in, in a car, when a car battery needs to go, a car needs a positive charge and a negative charge to move forward. It cannot move forward with just the positive or the negative. So when we are encountering things in our lives that are really negative and hard, we have to ask ourselves, how do I... You know, the first thing I ask myself is, why am I creating this? Why am I? And that's the hardest thing for people to get. The hardest thing for people to get is that this is a generative, creative reality, and we are always creating it. But because we create things that we think that we're at odds with, we would think, we think, why would I create that? Well, anything that you're at odds with means 
that you're going to have to draw more power to um, to conquer this opposition. So that is why we create things that we would not necessarily think that we would because they make us, they either collapse us, they either fuck us up and destroy us entirely, or they force us to become greater than we were before. And that is what this situation is doing with this um, Roe v. Wade. It's like we're living at a time when technology and um, information about who we are is plentiful. And we're still waiting on people to approve what we can do with our bodies when we can we actually have the mental and emotional um, bandwidth now we actually have the information to really learn how to do these things on our own it's there but when we when we experience something that is extraordinarily oppositional we have to ask ourselves what else is possible what else could what what are the other because there's always a solution that's the thing you got to understand in this universe there is always a solution and if the solution that you desire is not present there is another it's how it works and that's why the work is internal because everyone's solution is unique because we're moving into the age of aquarius so, you know, as we move into the age of Aquarius, the solutions are going to become more innovative, more in align with nature, more in align with our individuality. And the challenge is that we don't know ourselves. We don't really know ourselves. We've been conditioned to believe that there is a one size fit all kind of thing. And that is not the case at all. You are a unique emanation of the mind of God. You are a unique emanation of the mind of God. The cell structure and the DNA structure that is you has never been created before. There is no one size fits all. What oranges might do for another, apples will do the same thing that oranges did for that other, right? It's like really beginning to understand the uniqueness of this system and how you are a part of it. And understanding that white supremacy what this American system has done has put us all in a one size fits all kind of thing through this idea, through this lens of separation, through this lens of duality, good and bad, white and black, big and little. And that is what has been created inside of us. So we have to do the work ourselves to reintegrate those dual natures, those dualities inside of us so that we can begin to experience wholeness. And what that requires is that you have to integrate the negative and the positive, the masculine and the feminine, the black and the white, all within you. You have to integrate it so you can no longer have these things. Like I remember when I had to start letting go of my preferences. And I'm not saying that all of my preferences are gone because I'm a Virgo. <laughs> and preferences is a part of my um, being able to discern is a part of the way I function. So I'm never going to be able to just overlook anything, but I can decide that, you know, oh, I used to really love oranges and didn't like apples. I had a preference for oranges, but now I can say that I have a preference for apples and oranges. I can open up my palate what in all sorts of areas or with people, all of that sort of stuff. But it's important for us to nullify our resistance to negative things like really do the work because in order to become divine and god in your life god is love and love is all encompassing it's so simple love is all encompassing love does not say this is this stays and this goes love says how does this fit and how does this fit? That's what love does, right? So for me, I've been working to really open my heart because I've had a lot of stories around racism and how, um, like, not stories, I've, I've read the stories, I've heard the experiences, I've been in the system. And, and the more I'm willing to get bigger than the experience, and understand its value, 
question the value that it has in my life. And so one of the things that I do, it's like, okay, it's because of white people or the system, right? That I have studied all my life to really understand cosmology and so that I can really understand what's going on here. Otherwise, because I could feel the lies, right? And so I needed to understand the truth, but it's because of the system that I really do get it now. And I would not have had to do it if it were not for this system. It's because of oppression that I have really discovered my power. I mean, one of the things that's, you know, it's kind of, it, it sounds a little sadistic, but it's real. Everything that has come out of this country, you guys have heard me say this, black people have created every industry in this country. We did it 250 years ago, 400 years ago, every industry. And it revolutionized the West. Our creations revolutionized the West and have revolutionized the world. They just don't tell the stories of it, though, because they don't want us to understand the nature of our power. So they don't tell the stories of it. They actually cover it up with white supremacist ideas. But when you understand the nature, like oppression breeds creation. And so all of the things that black people have done have come because of the oppressive nature. And you cannot be at odds. I I don't like to be at odds with reality. You know, it's, it's, you know, people go, well, if that wasn't happening, we wouldn't have needed it. No, 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 no. We're just going to accept what is and understand that this experience here generated this experience over here. And if it were not for that experience, this level of greatness would not have been achieved. And so we, yeah, I literally allow myself to go through my mind and understand all of the things that have come out of that black people have created under the whip and under the strain and under the suppressive nature of racism and how that has forced us into a level of of um, exquisiteness, a level of creativity, a level of drivenness, and that is valuable. That is worth it. It is worth it to see the evidence and the creative power of black people under this oppressive regime. And I'm so curious what it will look like when this oppressive regime is completely obsolete. What will black creativity and expansion and beauty look like? How will it express when this racist, white supremacist, false, illusionary government and systems have been completely derailed. What will black excellence look like then when it is not at the effect of any sort of oppressive systems? And so I ask myself these things so that I can begin to program my reality with a new experience. It's this opportunity to really get curious about what else is possible because when you understand that everything that has come out of this nation, really, I mean, 90% of it is through the creation and the struggle of black people. When you understand that, then it just becomes like, oh, well, what could we do without that? Would it go away entirely? It might. Do we have to have this level of oppression in order to be creative? Do we have to have whips and chains and police and, and you know, hatred and hangings? And do we have to have the threat of all of that to be generative? I don't know. I don't know. But I ask myself, because even the systems that I have created, the classes that I have created are all created for the purpose of supporting people and getting free, which implies <laughs> that there is not freedom. So it's really important for us to understand where we're creating from and how our power is being generated and used and ask, is there another way? Is there another way? Because that then cultivates the possibility for another way. So the moon is in Gemini today and Gemini is the energy of perception. 
is the energy that rules our ability to perceive. I know our ability to perceive reality through our thoughts and through our feelings. And so Gemini energy is what you're thinking and feeling and perception is um, perception is perception is malleable perception is not fixed but most of us don't do anything about our perception we think it is what it is but that's not true at all mercury rules perception and mercury if you, this is how you know that perception is not a fixed thing your mind can change in an instant from something you can think of yourself right now on an island with all the people you love, eating all the foods you and you can feel that feeling in your body and it feels so good. And then in an instant, think of all the people that you can't stand that hurt your feelings and meet with them and you can feel that energy in your body, feel that energy in your body as well. That is perception. You just did that. You perceived something that felt beautiful and exquisite and you perceive something that felt oppressive and painful this is perception perception is not fixed and you can train your perceivable frequencies you can train them to perceive the reality that is much more incongruent with who you are and out of alignment with this system that we've been conditioned into and then whatever you perceive has to come you you have to understand that we're that powerful so the more of us that are willing to perceive a new reality where there's justice, where the system is dying, where the corruption is being, you know, siphoned out, the more of us who are willing to perceive it and then see how we relate to it. Like I'll ask myself, well, how am I relating to this idea? How am I? Because we've all been born into this system. So we've been indoctrinated into these ideas. Maybe I feel powerless to this idea of, of racism. Maybe I feel like there's nothing I can do about it. Maybe I feel like, oh, that's a perception. If that's what I feel, that's a perception. And then I'm going to perceive a reality where there's more powerlessness and where there's more fear. So I'm going to begin to then do the rituals to help myself to free me from that, to free me from that perception, because that perception likely belonged to my father or his father or my mother or her my father, right? Because there's a new reality. And so I wanna change the slides. I wanna change the input so that I can create a new output. This is Gemini. The moon rules the day. The moon is in Gemini. The stories you tell is what Gemini is about. And Gemini is duality, duplicity, the trickster. That's why it can change so fast. You think this, you feel this, you think that, you feel that, you think, right? It's also about your mental illness and mental health and mental well-being and mental flexibility, right? G Gemini is very flexible. That's why people don't really love Geminis that much because they're they they have like mental dex they can they can t t t right like i know i have a gemini moon so i can always see a different perception of something i can always see more than what people are willing to see because i have a gemini moon and the gemini is it's really flexible it's like well what about this and what about that and what about and it's not attached to any of it it's like whatever you say is what it is So, all right, you all, thank you so much. It's my pleasure to have a conversation and help us understand how these energies work. We're about to move into the new moon and cancer tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. I will, do, um, I will be having a cancer new moon ritual. Everyone is invited. Um, you can register in my link tree for the cancer new moon meditation. If you're already in my classes, don't do this because we're doing that at another time, specific to the work that we've been doing. But if you're not in the classes and you wanna set your intention and your tone for this new moon in Cancer, please come. You can register, it's $55. We're gonna do the rituals. I'll give you all the information and all the tools that you can work with for this month so that you have everything. I'll give you the, so that you can know where to go get the things that you need in order to support yourself. And we're gonna do the ritual. So share this video because here's the thing that it's important for us to know. The United States is a cancer. So if we're gonna reprogram our energy, this is the month to do it in. If we're gonna break free from these patterns, this is the month to do it in. America's in its Saturn, we're in a Saturn return right now. We're also in a Pluto return. 
the Pluto return is the thing that's most significant. So this is the energy to literally use our power to move us into a new way of being and thinking. So you can register for that in my link tree and I'm, I look forward to seeing you guys there. Like I said, if you're in my classes, don't bother registering because we're gonna do this in another way because we've been doing the classwork. All right, peace and blessings you all. I love you very much. Have a beautiful day, bye-bye.